Well, uh, welcome to another version of Tech Time. Appreciate you stopping by and uh, hope you guys have a wonderful day after this. All right, you got any uh, questions or suggestions or anything you'd like to do, you can always sign up again for more Tech Times or go back and look at other things. Um, today, I'm Jim Strandland, Technical Service, part of the membership team. Phone numbers are there for you if you need to uh, get a hold of us. My email is there as well. Um, we're hosted by Entertech University. Um, you can all go watch our channels and our YouTube channels uh, on those um, particular websites. Here's members of our team. Um, again, here's the Entertech University. When you're when you're here, look for the playlists. And you can um, watch a lot of our trainings and a lot of other tech times involved. Um, as you can see here, all of them that we've done so far have been listed there that for your viewing pleasure. And uh, um, always welcome to comments or suggestions for future items as well. Um, again, remember, um, and your technician now. We have a new app. If you haven't added it to your phone yet, please do. Gives you all these cool little things in here to uh, help you uh, perform and do your job better. Uh, scan the serial number is really cool. It's going to bring up exist <clears throat> existing manuals for that particular unit. Uh, please pass it around and, and let your fellow technicians um, know about it. It's a, a great tool. So once again, thanks. We're going to start talking a little bit today about hot water generators and these superheaters. Um, these packages that come pretty much standard on all Intertech units, or residential units, I should say, you can order them without. Um, they take a little bit of the excess heat during heating and cooling cycles when they're running, and it provides um, high water uh, for the domestic needs. Uh, we use a vented double wall, the superheater exchanger the coil, between the compressor and the reversing valve, and this extracts some of the superheated vapor to help heat the domestic hot water. Uh, the units still satisfy uh, the heating and the cooling needs. Um, and uh, the water pump for the circulation of the these superheated water is already pre-mounted in our residential units. So in our manuals, we actually have some factory piping diagrams to follow. Um, one thing to keep in mind, uh, copper tubing is really recommended for the piping of uh, all this uh, water to the hot water heaters or tanks that you're using. PEX is not a good thing to use, okay? Um, PEX can rupture. I've seen where the water pumps quit, generate excess, excessive heat, and cause a PEX pipe to rupture and, and uh, flood. So again, please um, not consider using PEX uh, very uh, wisely. How is that? So. Um, these diagrams uh, may overlook something, and it's something that I wanted to share and talk about a little bit about today um, that some people may not realize. All right, so a typical um, one pump or one pump system to a one storage tank may look similar to this. The one thing that uh, most of water heaters, if you use one of these, have a check valve built into the inlet. And they're typically um, connected inside down below the, the fitting in the dip tube. Well, if you connect the water pipe, and I'm gonna go back here as they're showing like this here, right? If you connect this inlet to go into the heat pump and back out, water has to somehow circulate backwards through that check valve, even though it's a little cheap uh, rubber flapper that I've seen on a lot of them that may not, uh, may not work very well. So what we always did uh, installation, just think about the check valve being in there and basically we remove the check valve from the dip tube and put it up above in the water line. And the reason for doing this is that if you had a water pipe coming off here feeding the sink, all right, and at the cold water line this is, so, if you turn the sink on that's really close, it can suck backwards siphon or suck hot water up to the cold water faucet. And I speak uh, about that from experience. So it depends on how the installations are. So always consider thinking about adding that check valve above the paperwork in the system, above the uh, 
the original check valve, clapper valve, whatever it comes in, depending on the tank they use. Um, also take a look at um, how close the outlet from the heat pump going to the dip tube. Uh, I typically uh, cut the dip tube off shorter so there was more circulation area, recycling water circulation is what I should say. All right. Um, another good thing to do, they make ball valves or put some kind of a bleeder valve um, on the pipes going in and out so you can get the air out of the system. You got to make sure that the air is removed before you turn these on to prevent uh, damaging the circulator pump. Now, uh, another one typical way we do is with, with a preheat tank. And um, typically we would not have this hooked up to electricity or gas to allow the, the superheater hot water generator all the time it can to preheat the water before it goes into the um, second actual water heating tank. Um, this is the best way, the most efficient way of utilizing the geothermal hot water system. Space is always considered a, an issue. You may not have the space to do it, but if you can, this, uh, <clears throat> this will be the most benefits to um, your customer. Again, think about the dip tube, think about the check valves, add some bleeders, bleeders in there. Sorry, <laughs> add some bleeders inside there and uh, make sure that the system operates the way that you should. Um, also remember a lot of places have off-peak electric hot water so you may have two of these uh, that are controlled after um, after hours or at nighttime so a lot of times those tanks may be set at 140 degree water well that um, does not always conducive to the hot water generator these superheaters for working because um, we don't push out that kind of hot water so consider your set points where your temperatures are and um, to make sure that this will actually operate uh, once you finish the installation. Um, how do you know if it's on an off-peak cycle? Well, you can look at the electric meters, talk to the homeowner, but also consider a lot of times you'll see a, um, a mixing valve added in the end. And basically the mixing valve will take some of the cold water, temper it with the hot water, and that also increases the capacity of the water tanks. So again, um, some things to consider is think about a check valve, depending on the vessels that you use. Is there one there? Is there one stopping the water flow or making it hard to make this loop? Um, remove the flapper valve if you have one, remove the dip tube. Uh, in some instances, I shorten it up to give you more circulation and better pathway of heat. And um, again, check valves move. Uh, Take a look at uh, the dip tube and add bleeders so you can purge this thing out a lot faster. Um, rules of the trade always follow the state and local plumbing codes. Okay, read your manuals, follow some manufacturer's instructions to, to your specification, which you like. But most of all, make sure this leaving water temperature does not cause scalding or burns to the occupants. Uh, 140 water, 40 degree water, 150 degree water can burn to infants and kids. And uh, so pay attention to that installation, be safe with your practices and uh, keep up the good work out there. Thank you again for um, attending today. Um, there's, check out our Intertech University page where we have a lot of other trainings, um, some more recordings of the trainings. And if you ever have any questions and want to discuss it with uh, technical services, our email is there as well. So. Again, thank you for your attendance.